When I say we, I mean Kamala and me. Just think about it. COVID no longer controls our lives. We've gone from economic crisis to the strongest economy in the entire world. Record 16 million new jobs. Record small business growth. Record high stock market, record high 401ks. Wages up, inflation down, way down, and continuing to go down. The smallest racial wealth gap in 20 years. And yes, we both know we have more to do, but we're moving in the right direction. More Americans have peace of mind that comes from having health insurance. More Americans have health insurance today than ever before in American history. And after, as a young senator beginning to fight, beginning to fight for 50 years to give Medicare the power to negotiate low prescription drug prices, we finally beat Big Pharma. And guess who cast the tie-breaking vote? Vice President, soon-to-be President Kamala Harris. And now it's the law of the land. Instead of paying $400 a month for insulin, seniors with diabetes will pay $35 a month. The law we passed already includes it starting in January. Every senior's total prescription cost can be capped at $2,000, no matter how expensive the drugs they have. And what we don't focus on, and our Republican friends don't seem to understand, our reforms don't just save seniors' money, they save the American taxpayers' money. You know what we just passed saves? It saved $160 billion over the next decade. That's not hyperbole. It's because Medicare no longer has to pay those exorbitant prices to the big pharma. But look, oh, thank you, Kamala, too. Look, folks, how can we have the strongest economy in the world without the best infrastructure in the world. Donald Trump promised Infrastructure Week every week for four years, and he never built a damn thing. <laughs> but now, because of what Kamala I have done, remember we were told we couldn't get it done. Remember when we came in office, we couldn't get anything fast? But right now, we're giving America an infrastructure decade, not week. We're modernizing our roads, our bridges, our ports, our airports, our trains, our buses. Removing every lead pipe from schools and homes so every child can drink clean water. Providing affordable high-speed internet for every American, no matter where they live, unlike, not unlike what Roosevelt did with electricity and so much more. We are uniting the country. We're growing our economy. We're improving our quality of life. And we're building a better America. Because that's who we are. How can we be the strongest nation in the world without leading the world in science and technology? After years of importing 90% of our semiconductor chips from abroad, which America invented that, those chips, our Chips and Science Act meant the private companies from around the world are now investing literally tens of billions of dollars to build new chip factories right here in America.
And over that period, they'll create tens of thousands of jobs. And many of those jobs are so-called fabs, the buildings that make the chips that's being constructed now. And guess what? The average salary in those fabs, size of a football field, will be over $100,000 a year, and you don't need a college degree. Because of you and so many electeds out there, American manufacturing is back. Where the hell to say we wouldn't lead the world in manufacturing? 800,000 new manufacturing jobs. Our Republican friends and others made sure they'd go abroad to get the cheapest labor. We used to import products and export jobs. Now we export American products and create American jobs right here in America, where jobs belong. With every new job, with every new factory, pride and hope is being brought back to communities throughout the country that were left behind. You know you're from it, many of you. You know what it's like when that factory closed, where your mother, your father, your grandmother, grandfather worked. And now you're back, providing once again, proving the Wall Street didn't build America, the middle class built America, and unions, unions built the middle class. It's been my view since I came to the Senate. And that's why I'm proud to have been the first president to walk a picket line. And be labeled the most pro-union president in history, and I accept it. It's a fact. Because when unions do well, we all do well. You got it, man. You got it. <coughs> I agree. I'm proud. Look, remember we told we couldn't get anything done because of we couldn't get anything done in the Congress. But with your support, we passed the most significant climate law in the history of mankind. Over $370 billion. Cutting carbon emissions in half by 2030. Launching a climate corps, similar to AmeriCorps and Peace Corps, creating tens of thousands of jobs for young people of the future who are going to make sure this continues. Mm. Creating hundreds of thousands of jobs in clean energy for American workers, including the IBW installing 500,000, 500,000 charging stations all across America. And in the process, reducing carbon emissions and we're seeing it. We're seeing to it that the first beneficiaries of environmental initiatives are those fence line communities that have been smothered by the legacy of pollution. Louisiana and Delaware, Route 9, all the factors, all those chemical factors are right next to the poorest neighborhoods. They're the ones we're going to bring back. And how? How can we be the greatest nation in the world without the best education system in the world? <laughs> Donald Trump and the Republican friends, they not only can't think, they can't read very well. Seriously, think about it. Look at their project 2025. They want to do away with the part of education. Well, during the pandemic, Common law helped states and cities get back their schools back open. And we gave public school teachers a raise. <laughs>